Hey, Lighthouse family, I'm so glad that you came to join us on our second night of Monday Nights with Jordan. I'm your host. Our guest speaker tonight is Brother Kyle. Tonight, our theme is God's love. It's amazing. I'm excited because Kyle's going to be bringing a spoken word. But before I say anything, I want to say, please like, comment, and share this post. You know, you may never know who sharing this post will bless because there's people out there who are looking for someone who could be ministering to them. And I encourage you to share this post because someone may need it on the other side and it could bless their heart. So please share this post, allow others to receive it. But before we do anything too, I want to say, if any time during this broadcast you want to give, all you got to do, it's easy, just text Love Lighthouse to 77977 or you could just type in Lighthouse Church of All Nations, click online giving, and you could give right through our push pay program. So right now, without further ado, Brother Kyle is going to bring a spoken word. I'm so excited. You've got the floor, Kyle. Praise the Lord, Lighthouse family. I'm going to be doing a word on God's love, and I'm just so thankful so, to be doing this. So let's just get it right into it. I love you may be the most inflated phrase in any tongue. You are told when you are young to toss love among others, but you inquire within. What is love? By the time you're 10, you develop your first crush. It was perfect then. The love seemingly fit like a glove. Your attraction to this clear yet exaggerated distraction makes you think it's happening. I think I found the one. And then you realize just as soon as this love had begun, this love was already done. The great attraction to a slim fraction of what life had to offer makes you feel quite dumb makes you feel quite numb. It's often easier to cut off love than to make sense thereof. I thought I knew what love is. I mean, I told my family, I love you. Isn't that enough of a pop quiz? I said it once, will it not make do? Well, let's just be honest. It was the easy avenue. Maybe the hardest pill to swallow is when you begin to wallow in the fact that you don't know what love is. My dad used to say, one hand washes the other. I'd say, yeah, okay, but you'd never truly understand until you make a sacrifice for another. See, I never truly knew what love is until I could understand God and the universe. I had to immerse myself in what seemed reverse at first, but it was as simple as a line of verse. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10 reads, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. But I still didn't understand love until I was grown up. Let me break it down into a simple sound. Love is like gravity in space. It is the base of all things in the first place. Gravity provides stability and the great volatility of the universe itself. Now bring it back to self. Love is codependent. Love is support. Love does not come short. Love is constantly in the air. Love is the sacrifice to be there because love is the divine perfection between two things yes. for the betterment and life thereof. Even if you never found a soulmate or a perfect partner, look around, see God's love and find grace in it. Never split or quit because God's love, trust me, is a candle constantly lit. God's love is trees inhaling carbon dioxide so that we may inhale oxygen. God's love is the moon cradling the tides on earth, which motion the first microorganisms to life. God's love is the sun perfectly holding the earth in place so that we all may live. God's love is the sacrificial giving of his one and only son so that we may be born again and live with our eternal father and live forever. God's love is a unification and consecration that Jesus brought on earth so that we may all be saved from eternal fire. God's love is creating such a complex species and such a volatile universe to show that in all this madness, there will always be a safe place filled with grace. Jesus commands us to love one another, mm -hmm. for in love is the natural likeness of our God. And in love itself, May we cling on to our Father and have everlasting life. Amen. Praise the Lord, Lighthouse family. Yes, praise the Lord. You can see that Kyle has such a poetic anointing 
And you were in uh, speech for four years at the high school, right? Yes, I was. I did do speech for a while. Yeah, you can see how it pays <laughs> off. Uh, that was amazing, Kyle. That blessed my heart. You know, Thank I was you. just, as you were uh, speaking about that, I just uh, was thinking about, you know, how the sun is 93 million miles away from Earth, and it is the perfect distance where it's able to nourish the Earth, take care of it. Uh, it's not hot enough where anything will burn, and it's not Amen. cold enough where anything will actually be freezing a point to a point where people can't live so you know you could just see and you know even in the earth the earth rejoices in the lord and all that he has made but i'm gonna jump right in to uh my message and uh it's gonna be more more uh more of just a just a talk tonight and we're talking about god's love so as i speak i'm gonna say four points four different things that god's love does and Wherever I say what love does, I want you to insert Jesus because, you know, in John 1 John 4 and 8, it talks about how God is love and uh, love is God. So, you know, you could insert Jesus every time I say love because God is love. Mm -hmm. So my first point I want to say is love pursues no matter what the price. Jesus pursues no matter what the price. So I'm going to go right right back to the Old Testament as I minister about this. In Hosea chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, it says, Then the Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love the raisin cakes of the pagans. They love stuff. And so I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and one and one half homers of barley. And I said to her, You shall stay with me many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So too will I be toward you. See, I don't know if you know the story of Hosea, Kyle, but in Hosea it talks about, you know, Hosea is a man of God, and God says to Hosea, Hosea, I want you to marry this prostitute, a full-on prostitute. And Hosea follows God's lead. Hosea ends up having three children with uh, Gomer, and uh, their life is being made together. They start to grow together. But one day, Hosea is out, and he comes home, and he sees that his wife is gone. I'm sure very confused. Hosea is looking around. Where's my wife? Where has my wife gone? And Hosea eventually goes out looking in all places to find his wife. He goes to the most despicable places, the most horrific places, not a place where a man of God would go. And he finds his wife at an auction being sold as a sex slave to the highest bidder. It's crazy. And I'm sure in that moment, Hosea thought to himself, I'm going to have to purchase something that is already mine. But Hosea still buys her. He still follows God's instruction, and he pays for what is already his. He pays the price for what is already his, and he buys back Gomer and restores his relationship back with her. See, my point for love pursues no matter what the price in the Hosea and Gomer story is this. Of course, this was talking about Israel and God's relationship with them during that time because sometimes they would be out serving other gods and doing other things symbolic of, you know, a broken relationship and that they were basically cheating on God. But this also is a picture of you and I. And the reason that it's a picture of you and I is because it portrays a foreshadow of us and Jesus and how Jesus would go to the most despicable place. He would pursue no matter what the price and he would follow through to be able to come and to save us. And today, I want to say that no matter where someone is at in their life, if you can live a lifestyle where you pursue because of the love in your heart, that is one of the key aspects that will take you to a love that Jesus has. Now, my second point is this. Love forgives and it always always, always forgets. In Psalms 103 and 12, it says that God forgives this far, as far as the east is from the west, 
so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Meaning that the way that God forgives is God forgives and he doesn't remember what you did in the past. He forgives you because that is his way of showing us he loves us, but uh, in a position where he forgets it. You know, oftentimes in this generation, I hear this, and I'm sure you do too sometimes, Kyle. I'll forgive them, but I'll never forget what they did. Yeah, I hear it all the time. But that's not the love that God has for you, and that's not the way that you're supposed to love on your brothers and sisters. You have to be able to live a lifestyle where you forgive and you always forget because that's the way that Jesus loves. See, the thing is, unforgiveness, people think that unforgiveness, you know, is something that is just okay to live with. But what they don't realize is unforgiveness creates a seed of bitterness in your heart. I've done it before. And it creates a seed of bitterness in your heart where it actually affects you more than it affects the person that, you know, has victimized you. So what my point of this is forgive and always, always forget. Because if you're forgiving in a way that you're not forgetting, you're not forgiving the way that Jesus did. And if any of us lived a way that, that type of way, and God was a harsh God, we would never be able to make it. So apply forgiving and always forgetting to your life. My third point is this. Love looks past your wrongdoings. Jesus looks past your wrongdoings. See, in Romans 5 and 8, it says, But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, no matter what, Jesus died knowing that we were sinners. He looked past where we were at in our lives and still went to the cross. You know, I have a quick story that I want to share that uh, a woman who blessed my heart when I was younger and um, who really changed my life, she inspired my life. Um, in high school, I had a professor who was absolutely astonishing. She had to be the most loving, kind, generous woman I have ever met. I later on figured out that she was a believer in Jesus Christ too. But, you know, when I was a student in high school, I was not the greatest student initially. I wasn't the greatest listener. I wasn't the greatest in obedience. I wasn't the greatest follower. I wasn't doing things right that I should have been. I wasn't even focused in my academics the way that I could have been. But when I went into that class, and when many other students went into that class, we knew one thing. This teacher was not going to base us on what we had already done in our past. She was going to love us no matter what. That teacher went on to bring so much confidence in my character and who I was because of her love that in every assignment, it was a speech class that I did, I aced it. And that may not seem crazy to you, but for me, I was not that type of a student in my life. I was not a student who was acing things. I was not a student who was focusing. I was a student who cared about sports, who cared about all these other random things, but I did not think about you know, education the way that I should have. But because of one woman's love towards me and towards other students, it was an environment to produce some of the greatest greatest students that you could ever produce. See, my point for this is, she loved me. She loved the other students past our wrongdoings. And it produced so much out of us. That teacher went on to be the teacher who wrote my recommendation letter to college that I got into. That teacher went on to be my teacher that I went and would help other students. I would be the, I was a service student helper in her classroom. I became very close with her. I had an amazing relationship with her. And it was all because of one thing. She loved everyone past the wrongdoings. And that's the same love that Jesus has for you and I. He loves us past our wrongdoings. Even when you were still a sinner and you were committing things against God, 
God still loved you and he still saw you valuable. And I ask that tonight you would do the same for your other brothers and sisters in Christ. Even your brothers and sisters in the world, that you would do the same thing. You would love on them even in the midst of them having issues, having struggles, because that's the way that Jesus loves. Amen. And he's the one that we're following. And my fourth and final point is this. Love, love never gives up. Jesus never gives up. You know, when I was in high school, and even now, I still love, I love to witness. I love speaking to people about God. I love inviting people to church. I love it. It's one of my joys. You know, it's, it's just something that, I don't know, I just love it. I love it. And the reason that I love it so much is because the Lord has blessed my heart so much and changed my life so much that I want everyone to be able to have that same relationship and have that same uh, passion for Jesus Christ. And, you know, I have one funny story where in high school, I would go and I would, uh, I would bring some people to church with me, and one particular kid, I would go to his house because I was super close with his family, and I would walk upstairs, just straight through the house, no matter when it was, because I knew their family, <laughs> and everyone's like, ah, it's okay, it's just Jordan, he's probably getting them for church, and I would walk right into my friend's room, and I would wake him up, and I would, you know, do whatever, pour water on him, do whatever <laughs> I had to to get him up and get him ready for church. I did not care, but you know, I would always say the same line to him. I would say, you know, man, if you sleep on God, he's going to sleep on you. <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> but it, it was just a joke. But the reason that I say that is love never gives up is, you know, in Luke 15, it talks about how Jesus, the good shepherd, looks to find the sheep, one lost sheep, and how much it means to him when he finds it. He brings it and puts it on his shoulder he tells his friends and his family that he's rejoicing because he lost his, or he found his lost sheep. And the whole point of it is, love will never give up on you. See, I love my brothers and sisters. I love my friends. And that's why I would want them to be able to be in the house of God. That's why I would want to minister to them. Because I know that I could not live to see if they didn't make it. Because I love them so much. In the same way, Jesus loves us so much that he would not be able to stand if we weren't able to make it or if something happened and someone wasn't able to make it. So if there's someone that you're praying for or there's someone that you're believing that God's going to save, he's going to deliver, he's going to set them free, I'm telling you right now, don't give up. You know, that young man, he is now saved baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and now he's looking to have his entire family saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. He's an on-fire believer for Jesus Christ, and his life has changed. And I don't know where he would be at if I wasn't doing these things. I'm sure the Lord would send other laborers too. But sometimes you just got to go the extra mile because if you truly have love for those people, then love will never give up. And you should never give up on those people. I'll close with this. You know, my whole life, I used to think that love was just an emotion. And love's not just an emotion. Love is actually a devotion. You have to devote to it. You have to wake up and just devote that you're gonna love that day. Because that's how love works. You know, in the hard times, and the days that you don't want to, and the days that things are happening, you have to keep on loving. Why? Because love never fails. True. Love is the greatest, strong force of God. For God so loved the world Amen. that he gave his only one and begotten son that whosoever would believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. See, the key word there is love. God loves you, and God paid a price for your life. God is love, and love is God. And as a believer, if you are truly a believer in Jesus Christ, you have to have love. You have to pursue no matter what the price for your brothers and sisters because that is the love of God, and that is what God wants for us. 
So right now, I want to pray. I want you to, if you could drop any prayer requests in the comments, drop them, and I'll pray for anyone who's dealing with love, who's dealing with issues, who's dealing with anything in particular. But I want to pray right now that God would fill you with his love. He would fill you with his peace. He would fill you with his joy. He would touch you no matter what is going on in your life. I pray right now that the love of the Father would come upon you so heavily that you wouldn't have room to contain it, that you would be leaping for joy, that you would be able to see God and for who he truly is in his word, and that you would be consumed by his love now and forever in Jesus' name. Right now, I also want to pray if there's anyone who has yet to give their life to Jesus Christ, just repeat after me. It's simple. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your love. Fill all of my voids. Fill all of my voids. I'm sorry for anything I have done against you. I'm sorry for anything I have done against you. I'm willing to turn for you, Jesus. I'm willing to turn for you, Jesus. And follow you all the days of my life. And follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so glad that you joined us tonight for our second night of Mondays with Jordan. And I believe that, you know, these four, they're not all of the loves of God because God's love is divine and it is, it can be incomprehensible at times. But I believe that if you apply these four loves to your life, you are going to see a drastic change because it will teach you truly what God wants for you in your life, in your relationships, in your home, in your family, in your friends, in everything that you do. He wants to produce the best out of you and he loves you dearly. He loves you dearly. I don't know who this is for right now, but he loves you so much. And he needs you in this world, and you need him. So follow him, listen to him, and he'll guide you in every area of your life. I'm so thankful that you joined us tonight. This concludes our second night of Monday Nights with Jordan. I want you to tune in for our next week as we speak on God's grace. It is going to be amazing. I have some amazing speakers. We're going to be doing a round table. Come join us uh, Monday night, 630, and we're going to be going live again. All right? See you, Elena. Take Stanley. care.